It's Matt here, and in this video, I wanted to share with you a little bit about what it's like to be a buyer uh, this year, this fall of 2020. If you've been watching my market updates or if you've been listening even to the national news, you've heard that we're in a really strong seller's market. As a buyer, that can be a little tricky. It can even be a little bit intimidating. And I wanna show you that I'm here to guide you and help you find a great place that you love. So as we go on this journey, we'll start to look at homes and eventually we're gonna find a home that you really love. So that's exciting. The tricky part in the seller's market is if you like it, there's a good chance other people like it too. And the advice I give you is gonna be advice to help you win and put you in a position where you're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the seller. Now, in a perfect world, we'd find the house. I could say, let's go home and sleep on it and think about it for a couple days. That's kind of my natural way that I would wanna operate. But the reality is we're probably gonna decide pretty quickly because somebody else may be putting in an offer at the same time. And we wanna at least have you in the consideration set. So the advice I give you may surprise you at first. Um, apprentices are all ask you to be aggressive and I want you to think about how much is the home worth to you? Will you be devastated if we come back in 48 hours and say the seller took an offer that was $3,000 more or you'll be like, mm, I'm okay with that. I didn't want to pay more than what my offer was. I want you to feel good about your offer and confident. Keep in mind that the advice I give you is simply advice and you can choose what's best for you. I'm here to serve you and guide you on this journey. So we've made our offer, we've presented it to the seller. The ideal scenario would be that they accept our offer outright, send us back a signed contract, and we move forward to closing. It's quite possible though that they may come back and ask for a little more or for some adjustments. This is where I encourage you to be flexible and open-minded. The seller may need a little more time in the house. They may ask for a lease back. They may want to adjust some of the administrative points in the contract. Let's focus on the key details um, that are important to you. And keep in mind that the seller in a multiple offer situation has other choices they can choose from. So we have to balance that with our decision making and how we approach it. Now, the other side of the coin may be that they chose another offer and we're not in a, in a conversation with them. I always like to reach out to the seller's agent and certainly try to get as much information as I can about why they chose the other one. They have no obligation to give that to us. So if they do, it's a bonus. I do want us to learn from our offer though. Each time we can get a little better and so that when we do find your next house you love, we can present an offer and ideally win. So really just summing up, again, I'll remind you, it's my job to give you advice. Whether you take it or not, it's up to you. But I always want to put you in a position where you can succeed. Of course, I'm here. So ask me specific questions. I love answering them and serving you in that capacity. And I look forward to connecting with you in person soon. Take care.